Let's start with some local news. Of course, ICASA confirmed they'll be announcing um, their initial plan for local loop unbundling, hopefully tomorrow, right here in Sandton. Of course, it was supposed to be at the beginning of the month, but delayed to some refining processes. Are we finally heading in the right direction, or is this just this more delays, delays, delays? Well, hopefully not. The regulator does seem to be uh, does seem to be moving on this process. Uh, the Minister of Communications, Roy Pariachi, has set a deadline of uh, the end of this year, November, in fact, to have this process completed. Uh, whether that's realistic or not, I guess we'll know from ICASA tomorrow. But uh, they're going to be they're going to be unveiling this discussion document, which is also going to be published in the Government Gazette, which should give us some idea of how ICASA is going to approach the whole issue of local loop unbundling. But Telcom, of course, is a little bit apprehensive about the whole process. Why? Well, it's, you know, the, the, the process of local loop unbundling will allow competitors access to that so-called last As it mile should be in a free market. Of, of, well, it, there are debates about that. Some, some, some people argue that, no, it shouldn't, uh, shouldn't be opened up and that uh, the sort of regulatory intervention actually mm -hmm. distorts the market. Uh, we, we, we should get some more detail tomorrow. My sources at ICASA are suggesting, however, that we shouldn't expect fireworks and that we shouldn't expect ICASA to uh, regulate uh, the price of access to that last mile. So I don't think Telcom is going to, to necessarily be too upset about what, uh, what gets announced tomorrow. Okay. On to the international front, big announcement in the international web space. Um, the Internet Corporation for Assigned Names and Numbers, or ICANN, that's quite a mouthful, is approving changes that it will allow companies and individuals to potentially register any name they like as a domain suffix. Yeah, there are a few catches though. Let's just explain what it is first. Uh, we're talking about something called GTLDs. These are generic top-level domains like mm -hmm. .com, .net, .mil, etc. Now, ICANN, there's only, there are only 22 of those at the moment, and ICANN is, is, has proposed or has, has ratified this decision to allow um, any number of, of, of registrations at this generic top lane domain level to take place. So we could see the registration of, of, of domain names like .coke, for example. So you could end up with a website like cherry.coke or diet.coke. Uh, you know, the, 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 the uh, list of um, possibilities is, is, is almost endless. But it is going to be an expensive process. I believe that it's going to cost in the region of $200,000 to, to register one of these top level domains. So you and I aren't going to be registering them, but certainly your big multinational corporations would probably look at them as as a good way of marketing products. And there's a price catch as well with renewing that every year. I think it's $25,000. I think it's $25,000, yeah. It's not, not a cheap exercise. Cyber squatting. Is this something going to deter that? Because, I mean, this is quite a costly exercise to get mm. that domain suffix registered. I don't think we're going to see much cyber squatting simply because it's going to be so expensive to register these, these top-level domains. Uh, there may still be an element of it, but certainly not to the extent where you see cyber squatters sitting on .com domain names where it costs a few dollars to register the domain. In terms of opening up a can of worms, because, I mean, it opens up the, as you said, the possibilities are endless. You know, what if things, you know, unscrupulous things start creeping in your know, swear words, you know, taking people on? Well, Do you think there will be some regulatory there, side to that? There definitely is going to be regulation around it, and ICANN has, got a, has produced a, a, a set of regulations which will govern how these, uh, how these generic top-level domains are actually issued, so I don't think that's going to be a major cause for concern. Do we know when this process is going to be implemented, when you can start applying for, for registration? I stand to be corrected, but I think it's this year. All right, fantastic. All right, smartphone manufacturing HTC announcing that they're launching two Facebook phones uh, next month. What would this mean for both parties and are partnerships like these between manufacturers and, and um, platforms the way of the future? I think it's inevitable. I mean, especially if you look at the the youth market, which is which is crazy about IMing and Facebook, etc. Uh, you know, a lot of uh, a lot of kids you see, especially in South Africa, using their Blackberries for Blackberry Messenger. Uh, they're on their phones all the time, typing away. And you know, a lot of guys, a lot of people, especially youngsters, use use their devices not so much for phone calls, but for interacting through social services, particularly services like Facebook and Twitter. And I think it's, it stands to reason that, that manufacturers, cell phone manufacturers, actually start to develop devices that are specifically tailored for these, uh, for these so social media products. So uh, HTC is doing it, and I, I'd expect a range of manufacturers are going to introduce Facebook or even Twitter-specific phones over the next few months and years. And as you say, it's maybe geared to more the more younger market who use there for the bulk of social media. Yeah, I mean, as I say, they use their phones almost exclusively for data services. They don't, they don't really make phone but calls. You don't have to make a phone call, you know, you can just be Exactly. <laughs> and then lastly, gaming giant Sony unveiled their successor to the PlayStation Portable. Now, fantastic new product, but with so many security attacks you know, on their networks over the past few months, will Sony ever be able to regain credibility and market trust from, from consumers? I think so, provided that uh, you know, this doesn't continue and that, that the hackers don't continue to steal customers' um, credit card details and personal information. 
Um, you know, I think uh, I think Sony's done done has turned it turned around its business quite well in the last uh, little while, and I think this uh, this hacking incident is is, is quite unfortunate, and it's going, is going to cause them some short term damage. But I think in the long term, with the right products, uh, the the companies are certainly going to come back. And, you know, we're heading in the next few years. We're heading into a new console generation with the PlayStation Four expected in the new, next few years. Uh, it's 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 a very competitive space, and they're competing with the likes of Apple and, and Microsoft. But you know, if they if they get it right, I think uh, I think this the security breach will be a distant memory in a couple of years. Fantastic, Duncan. Before we go, any other news tidbits you can share with us? Any breaking stories on the horizon? Well, there's a lot going on at the moment, but uh, I think one that uh, particularly grabbed my attention this week is the is the news coming out of ATA, which is uh, Telcom's the country's fourth mobile network operator. They're making a big announcement on Thursday around broadband pricing, which is going to be very interesting to watch. It's get, getting to be a very competitive space. So it's going to be interesting to see what ATA's uh, move in that market is going to be. And of course, they're also going to be switching on their, uh, their upgraded network this week. So they're, um, they're going from 7.2 to a 21 megabit per second network, which will put them on a par or maybe slightly less in some areas than compared to Vodacom and Cell C. But you know, giving them a really good network performance. So that, that should be live in the next couple of days as well. So the cell phone market, especially in the broadband space, is getting very competitive indeed.